Hello and welcome to another Witness Rugby Chat. We're up to episode five now, I think. Um, another special guest this week, we've got Ian Chavot, who's going to tell us about his plans to buy, uh, buy the club. <laughs> uh, I'm only joking, Ian is the, the editor of the RFL uh, programme publications, including Super League Grand Final, long-time rugby league journalist covering Witness. Um, so I thought we'd get you in, Ian, for your yeah. uh, expert views and have a little bit of a chat. Um, I suppose people uh, will want a little bit of reaction to last week's video with uh, with, with Luke Backhouse, who, who spoke to us yeah. quite candidly about um, his sponsorship of the club, his investment in the club, and and, and sort of a, a few frustrations. What were your, what were your, what was your reaction to that? I know you, you sent us a tweet, didn't you? Yeah, 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 of course. And you know, I did see it on social media. I was very impressed with, with what Luke had to say. To be honest with you, um, you know, he's got so, he, he's got some exciting ideas, um, and uh, you know. For me, I think witness should be should be listening to people from the outside a little bit more, perhaps. You know, I think Luke would describe himself as a, a student of the game still, but he, you know, from what he said on the on the video there, he, he's really picked it up. And you know, why not open the door to, to new ideas, to new investment? Geez, witness at a, at a championship club now, and that's exactly what's needed, James, in my opinion. More investment, um, a, a little bit better administration, if, if I can describe it that more marketing and if this, this lad's got some some money to put behind it why wouldn't you want to get involved it, it, obviously it's interesting what you say about you know asking for other people's help but it, and it's not necessarily just about the financial side you know we've probably both had a bit of experience of this in terms of even like asking people outside the club to help who would probably genuinely help the club yeah, that, yeah. that doesn't seem to have happened a lot over the past decade is that do you think that's something to do with the fact that you know, obviously Steve O'Connor and you know, he's a brilliant businessman. Clearly, you know, he he's, he's earned a lot of money, and you know, he deserves you know, the utmost most, yeah. most respect for his achievements. Yeah. But is it perhaps the difference between running a business and a sports club that's maybe being exposed a little bit? Because obviously, in a business, you sort of keep everything, you know, yeah. close, don't you? You keep everything tight yeah. because you know it's your business ultimately. It affects one of us. Whereas a sports club's slightly different because yeah. as much as yeah, you own it. Ultimately, you've got you know, witnesses probably dwindling out to three thousand, but potentially you've got fifty thousand, sixty thousand people in a town who treat that club as if it's their own, as well. If you know what I mean. So do you think that's maybe where? Yeah, yeah, I, I do know what you're saying. For me, there's a little bit of disconnect between the, you know, from a from a fan engagement point of view and the club. You know, I've been, I've been covering witness now for for eighteen years, kind of as as a journalist. And, and you know, last year was probably the the worst I've ever seen. Um, not just because of on on the field kind of performances, but but what was going off it? Yeah, it was becoming yeah, it was becoming a bit of a sideshow. And I know Steve's um, correct me if I'm wrong in Australia now. And you know, if he was seeing some of the signs which were being rolled out by a section of the fans, you know, it, it's it's not nice to see. It's not nice to see that on Sky Sports cameras. It's not nice to see whether you're sat in the north stand, the south stand, but you know. It's a job which needs now rebuilding. Steve, you know, I would never criticise Steve because he's come and saved the club. I remember when um, Witness was on its knees and Steve did come in and, and do a really good job in kind of um, investment. And I know he's invested heavily into the club. Um, as the drawbridge come up now, probably the answer to that question is yes. Um, Steve is a clever, clever businessman and he, he will not want um, failure, so to speak, to be associated with, with, with the, the Witness Vikings and, and his brand, but unfortunately that's happened. Um, and you've probably seen some of the, you know, the the tone of my kind of social media last year and and the year before, and I was saying, you know, Witness were sleepwalking in, into a relegation situation, and that's exactly what happened. And you know, for me, um, maybe the administration w w was presiding over that. Um, and they should have been doing something for it, not putting sticky plasters on it. I know that's slightly critical, but that, that's the way I see it, and that's the way I've, I've communicated it in some of the things where I've wrote. Yeah, I mean, I think, and certainly, you know, I, I agree with you in that, it, you know, last season definitely was the, by far the worst I can remember in terms of, you know, the fan sort of disc not only the disconnection of the club, the fact that fans yeah. are unhappy, like, I, you know, yeah, even my dad, you stop going to games and you just like you think that for it to get to that point where you've got people who've been home and away week in week out for x number of years you know going to Whitehaven on a thursday night you know in, yeah you know in terrible weather and then all these people have all of a sudden stopped coming you, you've got mm. to look and think well you know why are these people not coming and i think the main thing for me is that 
it doesn't appear to have been addressed in any way. Like, obviously, the fans have dropped off, but it's like, well, why are the fans? And I think there's been a bit of naivety where it's like, well, we weren't expecting mm. crowds to go, um, and they have, and it's like, well, you know, for me, I think it's like, well, how could you not expect fans to drop off after you've lost so many games or you finished, you know, obviously you had that, you know, the escape in Catalan the previous yeah. seasons, and it's almost like, like you say, the warnings have almost been there, and, oh, yeah. and you know, nothing's, nothing's been being addressed. Do you think? Do you think maybe Steve O'Connor is a bit of a victim of his own um, success in some ways? Because obviously, when he came in, you know, everything, you know, rebranded the club, you know, new logo, new kit, you know, yeah. was building up, you know, wanted to get into Super League. Obviously, we had that disappointment in two thousand and eight with the Super League license. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah. to his credit, he stuck by it. Invest, yeah, he did. He did. Invested in the academy, and you know, I wrote recently that it's probably about time now that Witness reap the rewards for that because, you know, it's a, it's a fair achievement for Witness that they ran a successful academy for three se- three or four seasons in the Championship even before they got into Super League. We know guarantees really that we're going to get Super League, especially when you consider that there's now Super League clubs who don't run academies yeah. and yet Witness have done it all that time. Do you feel like that's, that's part of the issue is that almost Steve sort of is promised stuff and then... You know, there's the famous quote that he said to Richard Lewis, wasn't there? And obviously, he's not quite got the commitment, perhaps, that he expected from the fans or from the town. And yeah. maybe that's what's caused a little bit of the standoff between the club and the fans. Yeah, I remember this this seven thousand figure being banded about, and when I seen it, I was instantly alarmed myself because, you know, geez, I've been like you, I've been watching witness on the terraces, you know, since I was a kid. Um, you know, I played rugby league in, in, in the town and I've seen that drop off a little bit. You know, there's certain clubs which are no longer existing, who are, who are now defunct. And, you know, maybe that, that's got a little bit to do with it as well. But when Steve was talking about this 7,000 figure, you know, geez, when Witness were, were, were kind of sweeping, um, you know, all, all the big clubs and, and everyone in front of him, um, you know, in, in the glory days, they weren't getting major, major fans then. So to be coming up with, with 7,000 fans was, was slightly ambitious in my opinion. You know, geez, you know, I speak to my father in law who uh, you know used to go as a, as a boy and, and he said witness has is, is, is been well supported but now yeah. you see the drop off it's been spectacular really James. Yeah I mean definitely yeah I think certainly the last two seasons you, you've got to be really alarmed. You know you look I think they said they lost six hundred was it before last season yeah. which is effectively probably about I, you know obviously I don't know the exact figures but I'd imagine six hundred is about twenty percent mm. You'd imagine they're going to lose a damn sight more than that oh, in yeah. this season. So you're potentially looking that within the space of two seasons, you've lost 50% of your hardcore did, yeah. fan base. Now, the 7,000 figure is interesting because, you know, obviously, we, you know, obviously the stuff that we know, and, you know, economics, you know, there's a lot of things that we don't know. Yeah. I don't think, as, as much as I agree with the point you're making about, you know, witness have never had massive crowds, yeah. I don't think 7,000 particularly is... is way beyond mm. possibility when you especially when you look at like Castleford what they attract because but I just think that it's almost like the club's not really done anything to get to that seven thousand. It's almost yeah. like this the club the club exists like it's always existed. But to get to the seven thousand the club's got to do stuff it's never done before. It's got to engage with the fans a bit more. It's got to it it's got to keep them on side. And I sort of feel like the problem has been is that they've alienated the fans, they've alienated sponsors, and that obviously makes it even harder to get. You've got to almost have everything perfect to get to the same foul. You have, absolutely. And, you know, we, we, we can talk about attendances in, in generally across rugby league, and, you know, it's a big challenge for, for the sport at the moment, but, you know, when we go down to, when I go do my shopping in Tesco or wherever, you know, I'm not seeing as many witness, witness tops, unfortunately. Obviously, they've got the shop there, which is fantastic, but... You know, there's kids wearing in City tops, Liverpool tops, Everton tops, United tops. It's not how it was. Go back, you know, rolled back 25 years ago mm-hmm. uh, when kids were throwing rugby, rugby league ball um, around the streets. It's all, you know, that, that's all changed. And, and now, you know, maybe Witness should be looking, you know, like uh, Luke said, you know, the other day, um, tapping into your Chesters, your Liverpools. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been a bit more of a presence in Merseyside because Saints aren't really doing anything like that. Like, <laughs> and geez, you know, he was talking about this when, when I worked on the way this weekly news, you know, 15 years ago, we're going into Liverpool, we're going into Merseyside, but it's never ever happened. Mm. You probably know more about this than me. The amateur side of the game in witness, yeah. w- what do you think the sort of, I mean, I know amateur rugby league as a whole has, has dipped considerably, but mm. what do you think it is about witness in particular that's made the amateur game sort of nosedive a little bit? 
it's probably participation levels really you know I don't know the stats uh, in terms of you know sad rugby league and and the amateur scene but for me you know when I, when I go out of, of a morning you know I look at the pitches and they're not as kind of populated um, with, with players with, with, with interested parents you know it's I know that there's a great club you know which you're familiar with as well you know on all it's all fan do it a fantastic job and they feed witness you know a lot of great players um, who I might add are not always playing at witness by the way uh, we've got some classy players playing at Saints who you know have been in the witness system um, so I can't really put my finger on it Jade, in, in all honesty but it, it's it's a problem it's a problem for for the town and the you know, I think we need to press the reset button on it. Is it? I mean, like I say, I mean, the amateur rugby league discussion is probably one for another another yeah, day. But do you think it's anything to do with the pro clubs? Are they taking kids too young? Because obviously we have the development squads at with this, yeah. and you know, obviously St. Helens and all that. And you know, obviously there's always competition. You know, you look at Matt Purcell and Danny Richardson. Yeah, you know, there's always competition because ultimately everyone's all the clubs are that close together. Yeah. That if Witness can sign someone, but St. Warren and Wigan can quite mm. feasibly sign them. Do you think it's? Do you think players need to be left in the amateur clubs a bit longer than they are, rather than pulled into the pro setup? Yeah, I'd certainly say that there's an argument to that. You know, and um, you know, there's, there's lads who I know who've been in the system who, who feel they've been kind of that their creativity and skills been coached out of them a little bit. You know, on the, on the other side of the coin, you know, there's there's players there who are really making a big impression in the game as well. So you, you know. It's different strokes for different folks, if I, if I can put it that way, um, and it all, all depends on that on that particular player. But you know, at, at witness, you know, they, they've got some really good good coaches in there. You know, going back to the town team from under 11s upwards. You know, I think Roger Allison, kind of that Dave Roll community, do a fantastic job. You know, and now we're seeing players now coming to the witness first team it, who have been in that system all the way through, and it's great to see. But now, like you said, and you, you know, it was well put by yourself, James. We've got to see that the fruits of that labour come through because you can develop all these young lads all you want, but they've got to be able to deliver on the pitch. You know, last year there's some players who have come through the system who, in my opinion, um, are not at that standard, um, a Super League standard in inverted commas, and now we'll see what they made up in the championship. Yeah, I mean that that leads us nicely into talking about next season, and obviously the club has sort of nailed its flag to the mast in, in some regards in terms of right, you know, we've backed our academy for the past ten years and yeah. now we feel like we're at the point where we've got players of sufficient quality to mm. do it. Do you think do you think the squad is capable as it is now of, of competing in at the top end of the championship? In, in short, no. And I, and I think, you know, witness fans probably do need a little bit of reality check, you know. Um, when, when I'm out of the town, people do stop me and ask me an opinion in terms of where, they, where, where do I see witness next year? Are we, we going to bounce straight back up? But for me, um, the, the, there's better sides in, in that division. You know, geez, you know, look at witness last year as a Super League club. You know, they got turned over by London, Toronto, and Toulouse. You know, and some of them were, were convincing. You know, so imagine that in the Championship. You know, and let's not forget, and I, and I say this with the utmost respect. Some of the referee standards and particularly great in, in, in that division. You know, witness have got to go to places like Dewsbury and Batley and get results. You know, it, it's going to be a hard slog this, and I think people need to kind of have a real kind of th- long cast think about a the league and, and b what they're going to do because it's tough. It's a tough, tough league that one. Who, who for you are the, are the sort of you know maybe the standout players? Who do you think is going to go well for witness next season? Well. The main man for me is he's probably on on the sidelines or getting back to fitness and you know all the actual bot you know really impressive the way he, he, he kind of started his Super League career. Um, I think Witness did well to, to retain his services because that lad could have could have signed with somewhere else uh, very very easily. A you know, really talented lad and I think he's one to watch. But I also think uh, Tom Gilmore. Now is the time for Tom to really prove um, and show his his class and skill at this particular level. Personally, I think he's going he's going to thrive, but you know the jury's out on on some at the moment. I think with a lot of witness fans, but for me, you know, having spoken to the lad, I think he's going to really set his stall down this year as a, as a top quality championships come out. Yeah, I mean Gilmore's an interesting one because he's almost had the two seasons now, hasn't he? Where the club have have almost 
backed in to give a number seven mm. shirt in Super League and whether that well, was well yeah and, and whether that's because A they thought he was ready or B because they couldn't be bothered spending any money to replace Kevin Brown yeah, properly yeah. is obviously another debate but it, it, like I say it's probably quite a critical season for him because he's never quite you know he's had a couple of good games yeah. hasn't he in Super League but he's never quite grabbed it and become like your automatic first choice and I suppose mm. the finest example of that is the fact that you know Liam Finn was brought in towards the end of last season yeah and I I was dead set against that to be honest with you because uh, Liam Finn, no disrespect to him, has been a great, great player. Uh, he'd done the, the majority of the, the best stuff in the Championship for my money. Mm. I, I had, a, had a good time at Wakefield and you know, he, he's been a, a real stalwart for Ireland. So on paper, that looks a good move, but for me, when they should have, should have been a little bit more cute and thought, you know what, this lad's not going to be around next year. Mm. We need to put some some real winnies in blood into, into this, this team and, and give like to Gilmore an opportunity to kind of put his stamp on things. Um, he's got all the capabilities. You know, we just need the right environment, the right course to see in. And, and I think it's important to say as well here, you know, a lot of the lads who will be in witnesses one to seventeen are going to be lads who come from Phil Finney's mm. um, set up. He's handpicked these lads from from young babies, if you can put it that way. Mm. And he knows all about these lads. He knows which buttons to press. And I think he's going to play a really important role not just for the club, but for also the careers of some of these lads who perhaps are on a bit of a knife edge, your, your Gilmores and your, and your Jack Owens. Yeah, you mentioned, I was going to mention Jack Owens, so obviously him and Gilmore have obviously grown up you know, playing together and stuff, so it'd be interesting to see now that both of them are, are, are presumably going to be in the starting team week in, week out, we just see what sort of combination them two can put together. Because they, yeah. Although they've both been in the first team together before, Gilmore's never quite really had a run while Owens was there. Yeah, that's right. And, and you know, a lot of people don't know, but Jack can probably easily play six. You mm. know, he can play six. He can play seven. He, he's, he's got a bit of football about him, Jack. Mm. Um, he's not, re- you know, realised his full potential. And I know on on Twitter and, and social media, people have been been bagging him a little bit, saying, you know, what have we gone down that route for? It there's got to be better on the market, but. Let's give this lad a chance. I, 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 he's not going to be on the earth, is he? Yeah, well, that's what I mean. I think it's quite a sensible signing um, from the, you know, especially because he's got that almost utility value as well. Yeah, but yeah, yeah it'd be interesting to see because I suppose, I suppose we're all sort of hoping Witness will sign a half back. But let's just say that they don't. Are you thinking maybe? I mean, obviously Craven's there as well. Are you thinking Craven Gilmore will be the first choice? But do you think? I remember Owens was it a game? It might have been against Lee, one of his last last games for Witness. Mm. He was. When witness battered Lee in the qualifiers, I thought I think yeah. he played six that day. And he, was, he was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he's a good player. He's a good player, but you know, again, you know, Danny Craven, you know, he, he's come. He's like Lazarus. He's come from the dead, really. Yeah, yeah. Your Dennis sent him out to Halifax, and we thought that was going to be the end of it. I think he played a bit of rugby at Felliston. Yeah, yeah. Maybe for wrong, and you know, I thought his, his witness career was, was dead in the water. But I've got to give him credit. He certainly proved me wrong. Mm. You know, I, I didn't think he had it, had it in him to come back and and create such an impression and impact in last year he, he really did that and um, you know he, he developed it into you know one of the first names on the team she really um you know is he is he a super league quality player i'd probably say no but he can do a job in the championship yeah. and looking at sort of the rest of the uh, the squad do you think there's anyone that perhaps hasn't necessarily you know obviously Craig and gilmore and owens have, have had plenty of first team chances already mm. What about the players who've maybe only got a handful or even not any exposure to the first team yet? Which ones of those are you looking forward to seeing? Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing young Lions, you know, Joe Lyons. You know, we've seen a, a smattering of, of good performances, really, from, from, from a young lad who's trying to make his way in the game. And I thought this lad has something. I believe Salford were, were, were looking at him towards the end of the season, thinking about bringing him into their setup. Um, there was a little bit of interest, I'm told, from, uh, from the Mancunian side there. but. You know, I'm, I'm glad he's staying at Witness. Um, I think he's got a, a bright future. Um, he's got his head screwed on, and, and I think he's one to, to to kind of keep an eye on. But but too, you know, the, the Chapel Hill lads are, for me have got to really show what they're about this year. Um, a lot of games, Sam. I, I think both of them have now got way over fifty mm. Super League performances um, under the, under a belt now. So so that they're not babies, these lads anymore now. You know, they've got to be leading the charge for the Witness pack, and, and you know, knowing them as I do. They, they will relish that, but now is the time to step up and, and prove their worth. Um, you know, because ultimately they want to be Super League prop forwards, whether that, that, that's with Witness or somewhere else. Yeah. Hopefully it's going to be with, with Witness, but 
you know, the, cha- the, the thing with the Chapel House is that they've got to really add a bit of grunt to their game. You know, you mentioned the Dewsbury and Batteries. Yeah. There's going to be some horrible forwards oh, that God, they're yeah. going to come up against. And, you know, looking at the sort of, you know, maybe we'll talk about this in a second, but the lack of experience around them means that the Chapel House are going to have, to, you know, they're going to probably have to do some of that dirty work, ugly work that maybe yeah. they haven't done yet in, in mm. Super League. Uh, I, I totally agree. And, you know, I would like to see a little bit more aggression in the game, you know. I want to see some um, some players be rocked off their feet by these lads. These are big, strong boys that um, I know the witness S and C staff have done a lot of work with them to kind of get them into into decent physical condition. And I'm expecting them to be leading the way. You know, I'm not saying that these guys are Terry O'Connor and Barry McDermott, but geez, let's see a little bit. Of, let's see a little bit of that side in, in this division because that's what it's all about. There's, there's, there's going to be a, a petulant stuff. There's going to be the you know. The, the niggle, the, the, the niggle, the odd offence here and there, you know, and these lads have got to stand up to it. Um, have they got it in their arsenal, in their armory? Well, let's wait and see. Yeah. Have, I, have I seen it personally so far? Probably not, but geez, they, these are big lads and, yeah. you know, they, they can stick the shoulder in. What about Wellington Albert? He's another uh, a big guy yeah. that, that for, what, for whatever reason, last season didn't quite happen for him. Um, I suppose in some ways, Similar to Gilmore in that it was like the club didn't trust him to play at the back end of last season, but then have handed him a deal to play a championship. Yeah, that, that to me is a, a real strange one. Uh, I didn't see enough personally. You know, I, I'm not a rugby league coach, but you know, I've seen him enough times to, to think I, I don't believe he's the answer. You know, and I witness kind of focusing a little bit too much on this PNG link and what have you. Um, not not to no disrespect to what's gone before, but mm. you know. We're on about getting back to Super League again. We're on about building a team with quality players who can handle the championship and get us back into Super League. It is Wellington that Albert um, going to be in that kind of frame of mind to, to do it week in, week out with the likes of Batley, mm. the likes of Dewsbury, you know, going up to York when it's cold and wet. You know, no disrespect to the lad, but I, I'd probably say no. You know, he's, a, he's a strong runner, but... I'm not seeing it, James. I think I think I think opinion's quite divided, isn't it, on, it is. on Wellington? Because I think people see it. You know, you felt it in the stadium last season when he came off the bench. People sort of left it, did it, yeah. yeah. And obviously, you've seen. You know, you see it a few times. You run the ball in aggressive. You know, we'll get a hand free for an offload, and it's like because we've not seen that a great deal over the past few years. It's almost like people got excited by that. And there's a lot of people who you know you only have to see the squad announcements on Facebook and people like, oh, where's Wellington? Where's Wellington? But. Is it is it is that side of his game you think fine and it's more the defensive issue why he's not perhaps the standard that we feel that witness required? Do you think that's what it is, or do you still think even with the attacking side he's not quite? I think he needs a lot more coaching, James. To, to be you know to be honest with you, you know he, he's I don't I don't know his backstory, but you know wherever he's played in in, in, in PNG and in, in, in down in Australia, um, it, it's a different comp over there now. And the championship is totally different to, to Super League, so he, he's got to kind of get his head around that mm. and come to grips with it. Is he going to be an overnight sensation? It's you know it, the the jury's out again on on, on that lad. I suppose witness it. I suppose witness are probably not in a position where they can afford to yeah. you know take a chance. You know if it was a if it was a Warrington or, or someone else who maybe saw a bit of raw potential and developed him, but I suppose witness haven't got that luxury at the moment. Yeah. Um, but. I, you know, having having said that, um, do you feel that? Do you feel that? I don't know how to put this, but is the is the lack of experience around the likes of Wellington and the Chapel House going to be a factor in terms of next season? Are they going to be affected by the fact there's not real? You know, I know Tangata's come in, and you know, we may talk about him in a minute. Yeah. Um, Again, I think you've got to, you've got to put the right personalities and, and, and faces around people like Wellington Albert. Make sure they're well supported, both off the field. I think I think more most importantly with, with what goes on it because end of the day, you know, it's um, that that close kind of goldfish ball environment of, of the the support mechanism of a of a rugby league environment. I've witnessed. I know it's pretty tight, but what happens, you know? When he goes yeah, on, he goes you know, who, who's around him? Obviously, his brother's no longer there mm. now. So, what are those support mechanisms there for him? I'm sure, by the way, the club have got all this sorted. Mm, yeah. But, but, you know, it's about performances on the field for me. You know, we're not obviously we want to be a great professional and do all the right things in the community and be the right 
person and play it for witness, but it's about what goes on in yeah. those 80 minutes. Is that where maybe, you know, Tim Holmes has left the club and I know he was very, he's been very good at ensuring that players have been looked after both at the club and away from the club. Are the club maybe going to miss his contributions? Well, absolutely, you know, Tim's been there, been there for, 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 for almost saying donkey's years, part of the fixes yeah. and fittings and, you know, he, he knew the club inside and out, he knew all the players and he knew all the the off, off the field staff and, and all the coaches and, and I was quite surprised when, when I read that he's been, he's been offloaded and similar to, to Eamon O'Carroll as well and you know I think Eamon uh, being snapped up by Steve McNamara you know a coach who I really respect and, and, and value I think he's doing a great job in, in, mm. in Catalans over there um, that's a real kind of feather in the cap for, for Eamon mm. um, and, and maybe you know I know he will never say this himself but it's a little bit of Two fingers to witness as well, isn't it? In, in mm, that yeah. respect, because you know he's learning under a great setup in in a, in a great country. I must say it's better than witness, by the way. But <laughs> yeah. um, but it's certainly warmer. Um, yeah, yeah. But he's he's gonna he's gonna really feel a benefit from that. Um, was, I mean, his, was, his, was his sorry to no, James. What was his development stunted a little bit at witness? Maybe so. You know, I don't know what Franny was doing with him, but. Um, and to me, it didn't look it didn't look or feel right when I seen him on the pitch. Mm. So hopefully, with the right tutelage, he can really make it a, a really good coach in the future. We might see him back. Yeah, I mean, he's only he's only thirty one, isn't he? I, my understanding was that O'Carroll didn't even get offered a deal. I think Tim, right. I think Tim Holmes got offered you know significantly less less money. Uh, okay. So interesting to see how, how that all all fits together. What do you think about Kieran Pirtle obviously coming in as as head coach? F- for me. It, this is a really good appointment, um, you know, and the, the kind of um, the old sentiment um, in terms of what I would, what I, I would have loved Neil Kelly to come back, but you know, um, that's just me harping on to the good old days, if you like. Yeah. But uh, but no, Kieran it is a quality coach. You know, look what he did at Lee under those kind of challenging circumstances um, to actually get get half a side out and, mm. and you know make a fist of it there was really impressive and. You know, he's got a, a really good track record and, and pedigree and you know, I've spoken to him a couple of times last year, um, you know, for the summer bash programme and, and stuff and you know, he's a really educated coach and a student of the game and you know, he'll tell himself he's, he's forever learning and I think he will he'll do well at winning really do. Is it difficult for him because he's effectively coming I mean I don't think apart from Owens, you know, Witness haven't signed anyone since he arrived, so presumably he's just come in and he's got twenty four, twenty five players that he's got a Make a team out of maybe a different position to when you know typically you'd imagine a coach, you know, likes a certain style of player or wants to sign a certain player. Yeah, I think I think that comes into play. You know, it's a little bit like you kind of picture that Fulham being give showing the door and Ran Yerdy coming in. You know, they've got to work with all these different players. You know, you've not signed. Mm-hmm. Um, who's been signing all these players at, at Witness? You know, that's a question I'd, I'd like to get answered. Mm-hmm. Um, if it was Phil Finney, then great. Let's let's come out and say yeah, it was Phil. Um, why not? By the way, because. You know, a lot of people trust Phil, I trust Phil, he's got a good judgement for a player, he's got a good eye for a player, so why not say it, let's not be cloaking dagger about who, who's, who's signing these players, that's because, you know... That's, a, that's what's annoying people, isn't it? Yeah, I think. Well, I, think Phil, I, think, I think it's a, I think Phil, I mean, I like Phil, you know, get on with him, and, yeah. you know, I, I think the, the job that he's done in the academy, you know, from where it, where it's been to where it is now, you can't... You can't knock that. You know their aim was to have witness lads or, or witness academy lads playing in the first team. And you look at you got Whitley, Danny Walker. You yeah. know they're they're playing elsewhere now, but they've still come through that pathway. Um, that role that he's got is actually, I think, a brilliant move by the club in terms of he like I say he knows all these players. He's known them all yeah, however right. long. He knows yeah. them inside and out. If he can somehow pass on that sort of exclusive knowledge in many ways because there won't be a coach who knows as much as he does to Kieran that's a great little team that they could develop there and like I say is it you know it's a shame maybe the club isn't leaning a bit more on that and maybe making big of a deal because I know there's questions about is James Real signing the players or you know what yeah no I I totally agree you know because when you're not clear in the way you communicate you know it leaves you open to interpretation Mm. and I think that's what's happened here because you know Jimmy was putting his name to some of the press releases and Mm. stuff and we're thinking who's signing these players you know Is it James? Has he has he got the uh, right kind of credentials and qualifications to be doing that? Because he's never coached in Super League, clearly. Mm. Um, so the, there was a few question marks about not over that, but I think it's been straightened out now. Yeah. Um, Kieran's in working closely, you know, 
with Phil. Um, it's, it's, it's a really good move. Um, I'd like to say that there's going to be a few more players coming in which Kieran can, can kind of bring in as his own players. Mm. Um, maybe they will be from Lee or, or elsewhere. Um, I don't know, but he, he's got a decent group to work with. Mm. Um, is it going to be challenging at, at, at the top echelons of the championship? It remains to be seen, but you know, for me, winners need to be punching in the in the certainly in the, in the top three of that competition to deem it a, a successful season. Because I'd put my money on the line now. I can't see winners going up this year. I was going to ask you about signings and um, you know potential signings or, or where areas you feel winners need strengthening. What do you think? Um, I, I'd like to see a little bit more grunt up front. I, I, I must say, I, I, know we, I know we've got. Lad from Halifax, and he's a great signing. By the way, I think he was the best forward in the in the championship last year. He's going to make a difference. I'd like to see a little bit more steel there too. Um, people would love a, a named half back if we can put it that way. But let let's let let's give, give these lads a go. Let's see what the friendlies, um, what they've got towards Christmas and New Year look like. And uh, you know, let's give Kieran the chance to assess his squad. Um, but I'd like to say that there's investment and there's money for for, for new faces because well, it needs it. You know, mm. I think the town needs it. Needs to run its hat on, on some decent names as well. Do you think? Do you think Kieran? You know, obviously it's gone a bit quiet the last few. I mean, obviously it's not been massively noisy because they've only brought in three new players. But do you think we're in a little bit of a period now where Kieran's going to spend a few weeks getting to know the players he's got, which then identify. You know, it's easy for us to say, well, we think you need a centre, but he might look at the players he's got and think, yeah. well. You know, such a body can play centre. Yeah. Is that do you think that's what happened? Do you think we're probably more likely to see something happen closer to Christmas rather than sort of now? Yeah, I think it's a case of suck it and see, really. Um, you know, he'll it, be looking at, at what he's got to play in terms of his um, his bank balance and to see whether that fits. You know, um, and of course we, we don't know whether whether Gellin's coming over yet, do we? So you know, this, that's a, it's a bit of a mystery. Yeah. So if 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 that's not coming over, then we've got a bit of money to play with. Mm. One would like to think. But perhaps not. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that was episode three. I had a bit of a look at the team, um, and we were talking about, you know, I was talking about Gellin and Inu, and you know, sort of, if if those both come, it's a different. It's almost like there's a different feel. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Than, than obviously if there isn't, because I suppose you, you know, ultimately, if Gellin and Inu don't come, you're sort of thinking, well, we need two centres. <laughs> you know, exactly. great, great, that's straight the away, bottom line. Away, yeah. um, and it's and it and it's who's available really. Because there doesn't seem to be a lot of. Movement that doesn't it, it never feel you know if if you're asking someone name five centres who witness could sign it is or any position really it always feels like it's a bit of a struggle trying yeah. to find names that would either yeah. a be available or b want to come to witness yeah and you know we've got a centre problem if if those two lads don't get yeah. signed up you know that that's that's pretty clear so you like to think witness would have a, a bit of a contingency plan mm. you know let's not forget you know. The, there's players like like Scott Giroux, which were kind of plucked from obscurity oh, yeah, yeah. in in the NRL in you know New, New South Wales and the, the Batagard Cup. And you think, well, what's out there for witnesses mm. to, to get hold of? You know, this is something which um, you know John Lawless and I you know we used to talk to Dennis Pett about all the time. You know what's been doing in terms of casting our net as far as and wide as it can go. And he it was always a bit of a, a stock answer with Dennis to say we're lucky and we are lucky. Yeah. And, and you trusted him because. No, well, he's got no yeah. reason to, to, yeah. to lie about things like that, but it's all about money at the end of the day, mm. and that's one thing which witness haven't got. Mm. Well, I, I mean, obviously, I, I said you know if it, if it was me, I'd be trying to get Ridyard, and obviously, it sounds like Ridyard's gonna gonna go yeah. to Lee now, but uh, that's a missed opportunity. Yeah, I think so because I think you know he's, he, I think the way Featherstone now, you could probably have picked him up cheap, oh, yeah. cheapish. I doubt he's on massive money mm. in 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 relative terms. Uh, you know, so it's interesting. I know there's a few net like Ian Thornley's being mentioned this week as a as a as a as a yeah. maybe. Um, is he a backup option if Inno or Gandalf come? Reese Evans has been mentioned, but I believe he's he's got a bit of an injury. But I think, it, like you say, it's almost like the identifying players. That's mm. really it's not up to us to identify players. You know, we're just naming players we know, but yeah, yeah, someone can find someone. Yeah. Someone like, like there's, a, like, there's players in the championship that I've seen who, who you know there's a there's a lad Galbraith that who's played at Rochdale. Yeah, so like, who, you know, yeah, I I think he's a really good centre. Yeah. You know, and, and it's like there's got to be players that are, are knocking around in the championship that witness would be a step up for them. Yeah. Uh, but I suppose does it again hark back to the thing was it a bit of, you know can witness afford to take a bit of a gamble on these these sorts of players? Yeah. Be because they've not got the it's almost like we need a proven 
experienced yeah. players, don't we, almost? Well, well, let's face it, this team, which is going to be going out next year, it's a little bit inexperienced. Yeah. It's slightly green because the lads who, who, who are going to make up that, those 17 places, you know, they're, they're coming from within. There's, there's mm -hmm. not a lad in there who we can say, well, apart from Matt Cahill, who, who's got over 100 Super yeah. League appearances. And I'm not saying that's essential, uh, but it's, it's nice to have if you can have that because it's going to be a tough old slog, this. Mm -hmm. It, it re really is, but I, I like to see a little bit of creativity. You know, what's what's going on in, in what's going on in France? Mm. You know, there's some players who have retired from from Catalans. Let's have a look at them. You know, mm, yeah. Vincent Dupont. You know, for example, yeah. could he come over and do a job? That's just in there. Yeah, just yeah. yeah, but you know what I mean. We've got to be a bit creative. We're no longer the witness who can bring in yeah, anyway. Jonathan Davis, John well, Bedford, Martin Fire, because that, that, that is dreamland. I mean, I know obviously they've signed new deals and whatnot, but you know, like, like Steve Tyra for me would have been an obvious one. Yeah, know, as, absolutely. As a centre to bring in, he's got the experience, he's, you know, witness lad, whatever, goal kicker. And it's almost like they've not really, not really been that proactive in recruiting. Yeah, Liam Hood's a good signing, Tang is a good signing, Owen's a good signing. So we have made three good signings, but yeah. we still sort of feel like we need another two or three. Still miss yeah, we're still missing we're still missing it, a few players for me. Um whether it's gonna to be too late to kind of get them embedded within the, the club and the culture of the club uh, in time for, for you know for next season. Again, it's another question which remains unanswered, but you know, it's been difficult for witness because they've had this issue with um, with the coach. But for me, you know, let's be let's be let's be really honest with ourselves. We knew that Francis Cummings wasn't going to be the man. Mm. Way be way before yeah. all this um, the well, car crash the happened. Yeah. yeah. So I would like to have thought we would have been preparing for that eventuality. Mm. When it came, but it seems to me that that it didn't. It took a bit long, yeah. Well, it, you know, it, yeah. Like you're looking like five, six weeks after the club was relegated. You know, you still it. didn't know who the new coach was going to be, and that, you know, have you lost four, five, six weeks research time, yeah. player development yeah. time, you know, recruitment time, maybe. Yeah, it was a major own goal for me, but again, we're not kind of um, subject to the inner workings of the club, yeah. um, and may maybe that was something Phil was working on behind the scenes. But but again, externally. We only get sold what we get sold well, by the yeah, club. Of course, yeah. yeah, if there was a plan in place, it was a strategy to get get a new coach. Um, what was it? Where was it? And why was it not delivered in, in a better time frame? In my opinion. So just to finish off, you know, you've said you don't think we're going to go up next year. You know, it's pretty much you, Toronto. You're thinking they're just going to yeah. walk away with it. Toulouse will be up there. Yeah, I think Toronto could be you know a Manchester City job in, in the Premiership yeah. in, in football really because. Uh, you know, they have got the, the, the real spending power. You know, they're making major, major impact over in Canada, um, and, and that's to, to the betterment of the game, by the way. And, I, and I'm all for that. But they're, they're going to be strong. You've got to lose again. You're going to be strong. Halifax, a really professional outfit. Um, this is going to be a cake ball for witness. Um, you know, the, the, I think they're going to struggle at first, but they, they will get to grips with it. But then, having said all that, ultimately it just comes down to one game at the end of the eight minutes. If you can it beat Toronto, it doesn't matter if Toronto win 30 out of 30 or whatever yeah. it is, 27 out of 27, if Witness can beat them in one game over here at the grand final, that's yeah. all they need to do. Absolutely, and that's what they should be getting on to. Anything can happen on, on any given day in rugby league, as you know. Yeah. Ian, thanks very much for coming in, being a pleasure. Everyone, thanks for watching. Please do share, like, comment on this video. Let us know what you thought of Ian's comments and my comments and we'll see you again same time next week.